Nice sunroom and cold sunroom. Yeah. yeah, that little space heater has actually been trying to cover for this radiator How's since we had the problem. Not so great. <laughs> All right, so what happened? So we had a leaking radiator valve in my daughter's room and here in the office, and I thought while my wife was in the hospital actually having my daughter before she came home, I'd swap these out so that the heat would be all sorted out. I did hers and it went great, perfectly. Seems simple enough. Yeah, right, and I figured while I was doing that one, I could do this one as well, but when I went to loosen the valve from the radiator itself, the supply line actually sprung away from the radiator you can almost see how much it pulled that way. Exactly, and I've tried to cover that distance and you can see where it needs to be relative to where it is. And I've tried everything since then. I've tried wedges in the basement, I've tried pulling them together with straps, and I cannot get this not to leak. That's I right. threw a cap on it yeah. and we've had no heat in the office ever good since. Good thing you had the cap. Yeah, good thing is right. <laughs> All right, well this is a hot water radiator. Every single one of these radiators are filled with water. It's very common in this area, in this neighborhood for this vintage of house. What we're gonna do, Turn off the heating system, drain the radiator again, and then we'll, I'm sure we can fix it. Great. All right. First, I shut the power off to the boiler. Then I shut off the cold water feed going into the boiler and add a hose so I can drain the system. It's really important to vent each radiator to break the vacuum. All right. Every radiator on a hot water system has a radiator valve like you've got right here. Right. So this is the standard here. It's got two parts to it. One is the valve itself, and that's designed to be able to shut down the radiator or affect the flow to balance it a little bit. But it really is a balancing valve. It's never going to hold positively tight, and if there's a leak on the radiator, it's not going to stop the leak. You're going right. to have to do what you did. <laughs> so there's two parts to it. One is the valve itself, and also there's a part called the spud. Now that's the part that presents a union. You know, this, is, this will be the part that goes into the radiator, and here's the valve, but you need a nut like this to be able to bring and mate those two pieces together, and that's why it's called a union. Now, it's going to tie into the radiator itself. If you look here, there's a thing called a bushing. Even though it's covered with paint, that, the radiator itself right. has a two-inch thread, and a bushing looks like this unpainted, so it has a thread on the outside and a thread on the inside, and they come in every different size and combination. So. If we had to, we could go all the way back to a two-inch bushing and we could, we could adapt as we need to. But I think we're going to be fine just leaving that one in. And now we're going to make this spud go in. But this is really tricky to get into the radiator. Because if you used a regular wrench, you'd deface the, right. the threads. So if you look here, you see the two tabs right there. Yeah. And there's a special wrench called a spud wrench, and look what happens. You probably know about this valve radiator. That's right. This I bought wrench. one for my daughter's room. <laughs> so now with that, we can now tighten that thread into the radiator without defacing the threads. So now I'm going to start by pulling out your plug and taking off the cap. Great. It's a little easier when it's only been in for a week or two. Yeah, the first one wasn't that easy. We actually had to cut it out. Yeah, sometimes they can be a bear if they've been in there for 100 years. All right, so now let's just be, I got a little rag here. There might be a little bit of water in the bottom. Oop, not too much, okay. So there's the plug. And now for this, I'm going to use two wrenches because I don't want anything to happen to that pipe thread down inside the floor. And when I go onto the pipe itself, I want to be sure I have a three corner bite. I want to have a piece of the pipe touching here, here, and here, so I don't let this thing get out of round. So you'll see right here, and I just snug it like there, and now with another wrench, and then I pull counterclockwise, lefty loosey. <laughs> Use a smaller wrench. Okay, now, many times to put a new spud in, we have to break both sides of the radiator and move the radiator out of the way in order to have enough space for the spud wrench with the valve. But with no valve here, I think we're going to be okay. So these connections are going into the old works. So I really want to have a good, tight thread seal. Many people might use Teflon tape. What I like is to use sort of a tried and true method for me, which is pipe dope that goes around. What I like to use is this. It's called single strand wicking. 
And what, with, with that, I will actually put some of this in each thread. I've never heard of that before. Right, it acts as a filler. I mean, it's, we've been doing it for 100 years. And I'm not worried about the new connection. I'm worried about that, you know, is there any right. pitting on that old one? And this will help to fill any gaps and avoid leaks. That's great. All right, so we're ready to go. So now, let's get it caught. And you don't want to cross these threads. No. You get one shot at it. I want to start it by hand because I don't want to cross these threads. They're brass threads and they could get marred and crossed. And once I have it caught, which it, there it is, put the spud in. Just tighten it up and use a wrench to just snug it the last bit. Now we have to do the same thing to the pipe before we put the valve on. And again, we want to be careful of the threads. We don't cross them. Now that's caught. And again, I have to use that wrench to hold that pipe. I don't want to do any stress on that 100-year-old thread that's down underneath the floor. Right. All right, so now we see the gap you've been trying to deal with right. right here. Now we could just muscle this thing and push this pipe over, but if we did that, it would make this pipe potentially bend a little bit, which would make this face no longer plumb to the opposing side. I think that was my problem the first time. Okay, so we're going to try to outsmart this thing. All right, I look down below, there's play on both of these pipes. So I'm going to use the power of leverage. So you're going to take a wedge right here, I want you to bang that down against the pipe on that side. Okay. Thereby, we're gonna draw the pipe this way, the radiator this way. But also, I'm gonna use these straps to come around here. And then with the two by right here, we're gonna use the power of a lever. So as we pull down here, it should draw the bottom of the radiator up to the face of the unit. So that's gonna make it. But you see this, we're just a little bit it's low. high on the pipe. Right. So we're gonna use another lever. So why don't you take this as a fulcrum back a little bit and a lever and just lift this up, right, when I say so, and w then when we get it up there, I want you to try to catch the nut on, okay. the, on those threads, all right, because I'm right. going to hold it up. So ready? You lift, lift, not too much, you're, you're too high. Yep. We need the radiator up slightly, the radiator up just a nano. Like right there? Yeah. Yeah, baby! Yahtzee. Okay, so now, let's get a wrench on that. Three-quarter bite. Okay, so this is the last of the radiators to vent. You can hear the air coming out. It's getting close. I can hear the gurgle. Oh! All right, so there it is. So now all the radiators are now filled with water. The air came up through the vent, and you're ready to go. I have the burner on. In a little while, this office is going to be roasty toasty. Again. I cannot wait, Richard. Thank you uh, so much. Thanks for helping. Good luck with your new daughter. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.